In this video, we'll talk about three impossible decomposition problems with polynomials. The main purpose of these problems is to illustrate the general idea. Rather than try and discover some special algorithm for answering this question in all situations. These problems also offer an additional benefit, and that is to practice treating polynomials, as you should do all vector spaces, on their own terms. In the last video, we talked about geometric vectors, so it was okay to use terms like lines and planes. Well, now we're talking about polynomials, so we should only refer to concepts that apply naturally to polynomials. And those include coefficients, and graphs, and roots, and so on. Now, the three decomposition problems that I'm about to show you when I step out of the way have something in common, and that is they all require a little bit of ingenuity and insight in order to figure out why decomposition is impossible. Now, you may end up feeling that they require a little bit too much ingenuity. Well, if that's the case, that's okay. These problems do take a little bit of practice, and the harder they are in the beginning, especially if you end up liking them, the better. So here they are. We're going to start with the first one, which is actually the easiest. And I encourage you to pause the video and try and answer this question on your own. Why is it not possible to express the polynomial x squared plus 1 as a linear combination of these three decomposition polynomials? Well, I think the reason is quite clear, and that is the fact that the three decomposition polynomials are all missing the constant term. Therefore, oral linear combinations of these polynomials can only produce other polynomials with zero free term. That's the subspace spanned by these polynomials, or at least part of it. At the same time, the target polynomial has 1 as its free term. Therefore, it is not in the span of these decomposition vectors. And all of this amounts to the conclusion that this polynomial cannot be decomposed as a linear combination of these polynomials. So there you go. We're done with our very first impossible decomposition problem with quadratic polynomials. And the reason was quite clear and easy to see. In the second problem, it's perhaps not quite as easy to see, but you should nevertheless give it a shot on your own. So once again, go ahead and pause the video and then come back and check with us and see whether you identified the same property. But in this case, there's actually more than one way to describe what that property is. We'll go for one of them and then say pretty much the same thing in other words. Well, here it is. What the decomposition polynomials have in common is that their coefficients add up to 0. Here we have 1 minus 1, 0, 1 minus 1, 0, and 1 minus 2 plus 1 equals 0. And you have to think about it for a moment, but if you add together two polynomials like that, you will get another polynomial whose coefficients add up to 0. You can either convince yourself of that logically or try a couple of different examples. Then you should do the same thing with multiplication by numbers and realize that if you take a polynomial whose coefficients add up to zero and multiply it by any number, you will get another polynomial whose coefficients add up to zero. Therefore, all linear combinations of these polynomials will have the same property, that their coefficients add up to zero. Yet, the target polynomial does not have that property. Its coefficients add up to 2. Therefore, x squared plus 1 cannot be expressed by linear combinations of these polynomials. And we have now completed our second impossible decomposition problem with polynomials. And as we keep discussing these problems with polynomials, does your brain keep conjuring up the following geometric picture? That we have two geometric vectors that lie along the same line, and a third vector that doesn't lie along that line, and therefore decomposition is impossible. Or maybe you have two vectors that point in arbitrary directions, but the third vector does not lie in the same plane as the original two vectors. Now that's the geometric picture. And of course, this space is very different from this space, and I often say that geometric vectors are as different as can be from polynomials. 
Nevertheless, the analogy is there, and that's very much the spirit of linear algebra. Now, when we talk about polynomials, we say that these three polynomials belong to a particular subspace. For geometric vectors, we can use the same term, subspace, or we can use the term plane, which is synonymous, but much more visual when it comes to geometric vectors. So keep this analogy alive. So respect the differences between the different spaces, but acknowledge the analogy and rely on it as much as possible because geometric vectors will continue giving us intuition and in some cases, the actual answers. All right, now let's move on to the last polynomial example. And this one is the hardest of the three, but once again, take some time, look at this example and see if you can come up with your own reason. Well, here's mine. And I'm sure it, once again, there are more than one ways to describe what's going on. What these decomposition polynomials have in common is that at x equal two, they equal zero. Four minus four, plug into here, six minus six, and finally four minus eight plus four. All right, in other words, x equals two, is a root of each one of these four polynomials. Now that's significant because once again, you have to do the same exercise. So if you have two polynomials that share this property, does their sum have the same property? That's not immediately obvious. It becomes a little bit more clear if you think of it, let me find some space, as a, of a graph of these functions. If these are your x and y coordinates, and let's say right here is x equals two, then I don't know how to exactly draw these polynomials. Oh, excuse me, x equals two right here. But you know, this one probably looks like this. This one probably looks like this. And this one actually looks like this. But I didn't have to know exactly what they look like as long as I know that they all pass through this point right here. And I think from the graph, it becomes evident that if you add two polynomials like that together, you will get another polynomial that passes through zero at x equals two. Of course, if one polynomial equals zero at x equals two and the other polynomial equals zero at x equals two, then their sum will equal zero at x equals two. The exact same thing holds for multiplication by numbers. So we conclude that any linear combination of these polynomials will have the property that x equals two is one of the roots. That's the property they all share and that's the characteristic of the subspace they span. These are quadratic polynomials that equal zero at x equals two. And of course, what I drew right here was just conceptual, a quadratic polynomial cannot look like this. I went into the more general space of functions there. Well, since that's the characteristic of this subspace, analogous to the plane, we realize that this vector right here, this, the target vector, does not belong to that subspace. In other words, it's not in the span of the decomposition vectors. And therefore, decomposition is impossible. So there you go. We've just discussed three impossible decomposition examples with quadratic polynomials. Each one was very different from the other, but they all helped us practice treating polynomials on their own terms. Now, one other thing I'd like to mention, this property, the property that the coefficients add up to zero can actually be restated as having X equals one as the root. So these polynomials are actually very similar to these in that they all pass through zero, but at x equals one. So having a root at x equals one and having coefficients add up to zero are one and the same thing. But nevertheless, this shows that in some situations there are more than one way to characterize the subspace. All right, that's it for quadratic polynomials for now. In the next video, we'll consider vectors from Rn.